partnership and S corporation filing due date is here. You still not ready? Afraid of penalties? Afraid of being audited? Afraid of credit report getting ruined and afraid of police knocking your door? We are here to tell you, don't be afraid. And we have a plan B for you for the next few minutes. We're here to give you a plan B if you cannot file your tax return today. And today is 1065, that's partnership, and 1120S, that is the S corporation. So both of these taxes are due today. No more extension, you have already extended from March 15 to today. So today is the due date, is the drop dead date. But what if you just cannot file today and say your QuickBook crashed, you cannot get the data ready and your accountant undercover because COVID-19 was so scary and they, you know, he is hiding underground and would not see you and you cannot get it done. So all of that could be a reason why you could not get your taxes done on time. And here we will, we will just talk to you what happens if you don't get that done. 1065, this is the partnership return. And let me just tell you, if you got into that situation and your QuickBook crash and your, your accountant under, is undercover and, uh, you know, afraid of COVID-19 and here you cannot get it filed, you don't know how, and at least going to take you a year to learn how to do it. So, and you haven't really find a community CPA yet to help you. So here you go, $205 per month per partner. And right here, this is what they say. So let's say today you didn't file and you needed one more month to get it done. So your September is half months, your October is the whole month. So you'll be charged for two months and each month is 205 if you only have you and your wife as partners. But what if you just have, you just have yourself it's a disregarded entity, my dear. So that is goes to 1040. You still have October 15 as a due date. You're not late yet, but you're only late in the partnership when you file 1065. But if your partners are not you and your spouse and it's somebody else, then it is two partner. You need a times two, okay? A late filing penalty and it's assessed on the partnership return, not on you individually. Then a example would be 10 member partnership would be penalized for $2,050 just for one month being late. So if you didn't file today, you'll file at the end of September, that would be $2,050 for 10 partner, right? And then the other things that I want to mention to you is when you get penalized, and don't panic because there is a way to get away from waiving that penalty. Let's look at 1120 as here because today is this two are due, right? 1065, 1120S. So the 1120S is also due today and the charges is the same. It's a per shareholder per month. It's $205 per month or part of the months and if you are late. So if you have a 10 shareholder in the S corporation, then your bill for one for being late, it will be 2050 if you submitted your tax return in the beginning of October. So make sure that you understand the penalty. Once you understand the penalty, you know that it's no big deal. It is okay. And if I am going to do it right, save so much taxes for myself, I don't care about paying $205 per shareholder kind of penalty. Now, let's talk about abate the penalty for partnership. And abate the penalty for partnership had a three very important conditions I want you to know. Number one, the partnership has to have 10 or fewer partners. Then you can abate it. That means you can try to waive that with IRS. If you have more partners than 10, then there is no 
abatement. If you are late, you're going to be prepared to pay penalty. Okay, and the partnership must consist entirely the U.S. residents. So you cannot have the um, the the partners from the foreign country that you cannot abate the penalty. And each partner must file their personal tax return on time properly. So that is another condition. If those three conditions are met and you can go through IRS process to abate your penalty. And if you know if you have your penalty uh, if you have your penalty letter already and you know that these three conditions you meet, then you know that you can write to IRS, start the abating, start this process for abating the penalty. And the reasonable cost is something that really important for you to know. When you have a reasonable cost and you submit a letter to IRS, tell them that you want to abate, then that will be it and they will give you. Then you probably ask me, what is a reasonable cost? Can I say that my kids doesn't want me to work? So that's why I didn't file it. Mm, that's not a reasonable cost, unless maybe your kids got COVID-19 and you are struggling with that, then you didn't file. Yes, that's a reasonable cost. So the example I give you is your partner or other close relative died shortly before tax return or payment deadline and you have an unexpected stay in the hospital preventing you from dealing with your taxes or with 2020 we have a COVID-19 as a blanket excuse for a lot of people right and even if we didn't get diagnosed with COVID-19 but if I have the symptom and I am not allowed to go out and I need to self-quarantine then I'm late because I was quarantined and, um, you know, my tax preparer definitely not going to see me if I am, you know, if I am sus suspicious for getting COVID-19 virus. Now, a very important concept, a thing that I want to introduce to you today, which is what we call the first time penalty abatement. The first time penalty abatement, it is a administrative waiver. That means it doesn't really get complicated. It's a letter and a yes. So it's as simple as that. So with this one, what that means is if you have never ever was late in the past, so your partnership was 10 years, but this year was COVID-19 and you are late, but you never was late before. And with just that, you, you request, and IRS actually have a system in place knew that you were never late. So they will automatically give you that waiver if you request. But you also don't have to wait until the waiver, come, uh, the, the penalty come in to request it. You can file your late partnership tax return and wait the request for waiving the penalty. So proactive, right? That's what you call it. So you want to be proactive and so they can actually give you, give you, the, give you the waiver and then you also the last one is if you got it and one of your partner was so afraid of it they already paid it if that happened you know that you can fill up a form and i will show you shortly of that form and that form will allow you to get the money back okay so this is the first time penalty abatement is easy with the a lot of people don't even know what that is but you want to make sure that you for sure should take advantage of that when you are get charged for late filing. All right. So now let's talk about what kind of penalty. I know we're talking about late filing, right? $205 a month, a shareholder or a partner. But what kind of penalty can be waived by this first time penalty abatement? So let's take a look at it. So the first time abatement can only apply to the following situation. So for individual, failure to file. So for individual, if you are just not filing it, this is your first time, that automatically comes in. Failure to pay penalty. Let's say you, uh, as an individual, and you just didn't have money when you have a tax due, so you didn't pay. And so you got this late payment penalty, okay? 
there's a three kind of very ordinary normal penalty. One is um, late filing penalty, late payment, late payment penalty. The other one is penalty for late estimated tax penalty. So those are three most often seen penalties. So here, failure to file, failure to pay penalty, and estate and the gift tax return are, are ineligible because estate and gift tax returns are also connected to the personal end and then they do not, they do not uh, follow the FTA, the first time abatement. And business taxpayer, business taxpayer, though also include the payroll business, the business with payroll taxes submission, that you can use this one for failure to file, failure to pay, and a failure to deposit because let's say you got a 941 taxes you are paying, but you don't think have enough money so it got bounced. That you got a penalty on that. And you know that if it is the first time and you should just use this FTA and get that abated, okay? Of course, someone, you know, when we posted this webinar, someone already sent me a message and asking me about civil penalty. So civil penalty is a financial penalty imposed by a government agency. It doesn't matter if it's IRS or it's Department of Labor. It's by a government agency as restitution for wrongdoing. So basically, you're reimbursing the government for wrongdoing. So it is a penalty that they already determined you did something wrong. So with that, of course, it doesn't apply to FTA, but what I am trying to tell you is because it was determined as you have a wrongdoing, that's why you have a civil penalty and to know that it is so important for you to protect yourself from being classified as a wrongdoing. And with that, it's kind of, that's my two cents for today. And it really give you the understanding of how the penalty goes. And if you cannot file 1120S 1065 today, remember, it's not the end of the world. I want to tell you that if you cannot file because you have to restore your QuickBook data and because you have to make sure your T's crossed and I started and you want to be accurate and those are always good behaviors in terms of filing a accurate tax return so you don't overpay taxes and you don't accidentally underpay taxes and later on get audited so that is uh, if you if you are a husband and wife team under partnership that's a $205 cost for you basically and you know, if we're talking about saving taxes by thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousands, as a result of better accounting, that is all worth it, right? So it is a once you know the cost, I think the decision is a lot easier. So you're not panicking about, well, am I going to get audited? Am I going to, you know, to be um, sent to the police? Going to be sent to my home? To knocking on my door? Um, am I running any bad record on my credit report? All of that is not related. And being late is being late. In fact, if you are late, the IRS cannot audit you, right? Because you haven't really filed it. How do they audit you? And if you are filing late, has nothing to do with your credit report, has nothing to do with the police knocking over, uh, coming over your door and uh, coming over to knock your door. Because that has to be something else, not about your filing late. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this gives you the final look at 1065 1120s i hope you have a good filing day today and uh, you know someone was asking me uh, how did i find time to talk about this and i supposed to be busy yes i am very busy uh, but i'm glad you're here to listen to this because you got to know what's your bottom line before make a sound decision and i'll talk to you later bye bye